What's up guys, welcome to the garage. Today we are gonna have an in-depth look at how this thing um, is made. Now, those that have seen the two videos of this, you'd have noticed that I wasn't the biggest fan. Um, I've noticed that a couple of bigger YouTubers have got hold of this now as well and they've reviewed it, so um, check out the reviews from them. But again, I can say that it's not really impressed straight out of the box. And it's okay on a smooth surface. As soon as you put it in water, you get the front tipping down and, and it doesn't hover. It's more like a, a boat than a hovercraft. And the reason behind that is a couple of reasons and my theory why. First of all, the battery is up front here. So the battery goes in the front there and it's quite a big heavy 2S uh, live part at the front there. So you've got quite a bit of weight in the front. Excuse this, I'll talk about the uh, all this in a minute, but I've uh, changed it a bit as you can see. And then you've got the gaps here that blow out uh, the lift air for the, the skirt. I've cut this, I'll talk about why I've cut it in a minute. Um, but this is sealed and then you've just got the air that blows out here and also fills this up a little bit. Now, when it's on the water, I'll show you a few clips now. And when it's on the water, you can see that all the air bubbles coming out of it. And, it's, and that's on the low setting as well. Even on the low setting, it's unable on the water to be able to hover with any kind of stability at all. It's, if it's not coming out of one side when you're turning, it comes out the other side, it comes out the back, and it's just really um, not all that good at hovering. So anyway, I've had a bit of a play with it. I got sent this for free for review. So for me, it's not a big waste of money. I know a few of you might get a little bit angered that I've cut this up and I'm gonna pull it to pieces in a minute, but for me, there's no cost to this. So I do this so you don't have to. Anyway, I've been playing with it today and I've trimmed some of the skirt off. Initially, I just pulled it all out and tried it. That didn't really work because it just all uh, came right up really high and blew air out the side. Trimmed a bit more off, kept trying, blanked off some holes and stuff like that. And I'll be honest with you, nothing really made any improvement. I did make an improvement on the water by pulling this out and then trimming just a small layer off around there. That did help it a little bit on the water, but it wouldn't go at all on the ground. So I think we can safely say this is probably not the best RC hovercraft out there. There's not many RC hovercrafts out there. This one looks really good and it's really nice in scale. It's got some good features and it does go well on smooth ground, but on the water, it's just a boat really. Um, and it's not a very good handling boat. Anyway, let's look a little bit deeper into it and let's take it apart and have a look at it. If you're not interested in what's inside it, at the end of this video, there is um, a little bit for you on the perfect surface that I found, which is a waterlogged car park. So you've got smooth concrete, with a you know a couple of mil of water and this thing is really good fun if you haven't got that then um yeah you're just limited to just a smooth surface anyway that's at the end of this video let's get this thing apart and have a little bit more of a look at it so we'll just quickly look at the top then so on here you've got three brushless motors that push these um propellers along and these are proportional turning the only issue is i think it's got a gyro in here but also with the um the power of these when you're when you're accelerating and you turn sharply from one way to the other it does fling them across the other side it, when you're actually um driving it it does look like this is non-proportional uh, but it is proportional it's just um the power coming from these does kind of like move them about not all that easy to control that's on the top let's take the bottom off and let's have a look what's under all of here Right then. So under here then, uh, let's have a look around here. So this is actually uh, like some uh, some foam. So to give it buoyancy, uh, there's also a bit there as well. And then you've got a lift fan. Well, uh, and then there's your fan in there that provides your lift. So it looks like this is, um, there's a motor that's going through the middle of that. Uh, it's given that the ability to spin, I guess. Uh, I guess that's an outrunner motor in there. We'll take this off in a minute and have a look at that, but that's your lift fan. 
That's the one that's got the three speeds. The skirt, as you see, was wrapped around there. And you've got your battery um, case there. And then under here, looks like your electronics. And there's your um, linkage under there for your the three um, propellers on top. Let's take these, let's take the buoyancy aids off. And then we'll get this motor out and have a good look at that. I have got an electric screwdriver. I've lost it, so we're going old school today. So that's all the uh, buoyancy stuff off. As you can see, we've now got like a little a little bracket around here that's holding the skirt on. I'm gonna whip that off. <laughs> gonna whip the skirt off. Um, and then we're gonna take this motor out and then we'll just access all that as well. Let's have a look at that. Right, so the skirt's off. So long as it's taken me to ever get a skirt off. Um, so there's your brushless motor, a bit more accessible there. You can see it's actually, it's got one uh, electronics board that's powering that brushless motor and these three brushless motors as well. So it's quite impressive that it's not much there really to control these. So. Uh, all right, anyway, there's your servo, and there's the linkage there for the fans. Let's switch it on, shall we? Uh, let's just prop it up with something. Get the transmitter on. So there you saw the uh, the servo working, the linkages, and then the, your lift fan there. So the actual design of it is pretty simple. I mean, even, even that linkage is simple of how it turns the motors on the back. Uh, I want to say, but it works, but obviously it doesn't work. But when it does work on um, smooth surface, but really simple under there. Uh, considering this thing costs you uh, $200 plus, pretty basic. Let's take this lift fan off and let's have a look at how this lift fan's working. It's uh, it's not a motor I'm familiar with in there. I think they use them on quadcopters and stuff that you can see in there. But you can just see the coils in there, how they're wound. Like I say, not one I'm familiar with. Pretty sure they're used for drones and maybe aircraft. So it spins on the outer, um, the outer body of the motor spins and then you've got the windings on the inside. So that's what it's using for the uh, lift motor. There's actually more, I know I said that that's simple electronics there, there's actually more up in there. So we'll take this off and we'll have a look at what's inside that top portion. So actually looking at it now, I didn't notice at first, the motors for the um, cables for the lift motor do come out of there and the cables coming off of this electronics here for the, uh, the thrust. So not much under there actually, but it shows um, you've got these little tiny fans that are on bearings there when it's actually drawing down there it draws the air through there to use it as the uh use it for lift it's a pretty cool feature nice and scale because i'm pretty sure that's how it would work on a real hovercraft so yeah it's a pretty cool uh, little scale thing there we need to take this top bit off so two screws either side and then that just pulls up like that and there's some more electronics in there. I guess that's in there because it keeps it out of the water. And that stuff underneath is waterproof, whereas this um, isn't. 
don't know if there's much else to show you on it really a bit of electronics in the top there i guess the gyro is probably up here as well your uh, battery goes in you've got your servo connections up there for the rear you've got another one in there don't know where that goes i think that's for the gyro and then underneath the electronics for your three brushless motors there well, i've had a few goes on it it's pretty fun but uh I've cut that skirt, so it's definitely not going to work anymore. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of this stuff. I'm definitely going to use these. And what I might do is mount them on there on something else. So I don't know, maybe a little truck or something like that. would be quite fun to see if I can get them on there and see how that works. As for the rest of it, I might put it back together and stick it on the wall or something. But it's not going to get any more use in the garage. Anyway. hope you enjoyed that and just to end a very long video there's now a recording of this on the best surface i could find which is that flooded car park cheers for watching and i'll see you next time